What's up, Cover Killer Nation? It's time to go back to the past. Yeah, we're talking the past again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is one of those albums that a lot of people consider to be a cult classic. This is something that is not necessarily held very well by the whole entire metal uh, generation, the whole entire metal community, because a lot of people still don't know about this. However, this was a band that was around for a very short period of time during the early 1990s, and they did something that was not being done in the United States, for one, let alone not really being done all that much in the entire world. The band we're talking about is Vaughn, and the album that we're talking about is Satanic Blood Angel. Now, this is actually a 2003 compilation of their two demos that were released within about a two-year span in the early 1990s. However, everything is still retained. They basically just put those two demos together onto one album, and you got the complete package. Now, this was a band that was from the West Coast, actually from the San Francisco area. And they actually performed and did a lot of their studio work in, the, in a warehouse in which the three of them uh, each worked at. And you can definitely tell on the record's production. This is early, raw, black metal production at its finest literally recording everything that you do in a warehouse, as opposed to going down to a studio. Now, they did rent some studio time, however, I will say this. You can definitely tell that this is something that was done very roughly, and at a very small budget. However, years later, this is an album that still has a lot of sentimental value to a lot of fans. This is something that a lot of people still look up to because they consider this to be the first true American black metal band. And they're doing something that you see a lot more nowadays than you ever would have seen in the early 1990s. And that was kind of a more minimalistic style of black metal. This is basically what you would say new metal would be, only cult. Everybody says that new metal just plays three chords or three riffs, and then they repeat, rinse, do all that shit. Well, basically, this is something similar. There's about three uh, different ideas that are made up of maybe four or five power chords at the max, and then there's blast beats in the background, harsh vocals. There you go. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Really easy, simple way to really describe this. However, well, it actually works a little bit better than new metal. New metal might be catchier, but something about this is just raw. Something about this is just really bare-bones basic, and it actually makes it a very appealing release, and a very interesting one. In fact, it was something that had a real large impact on the black metal community all across the world, and it's even felt today. Why? There's a track on this particular affair that's entitled Watain. Now, uh, remind me, isn't there a band that has that name? Yeah, directly influenced from Vaughn's release. In fact, <laughs> Vard from Burza may have inevitably given them their largest piece of free publicity because during one of his interviews, whenever he was about to go into uh, a prison, one of the trials, should I say, he was wearing a Bond shirt. He tried to explain what it meant. He did so very wrongly, basically, because he's Vard. He likes to find meaning in everything. <clears throat> However, the name really means everything that is nothing. And strangely enough, in Scandinavian, it means hope. Maybe this album can actually take a little bit from that culture. This was hope for American black metal. This was the hope that there was a band out there that wanted to play this particular style in the good old U.S. of A. It could turn out just as good as the stuff from Scandinavia or Europe. Maybe it's a little bit more raw. Maybe it's not exactly as polished. Maybe the things that you don't hear, or excuse me, the things that you typically hear in black metal releases are not present on this record. But you have to admit, for the history's sake, not to mention for the fact that this was a revolution of sorts. It ain't bad. Yeah, this isn't an album that's going to wow you. This isn't something that's going to knock your socks off. However, it's a really nice time capsule. This is raw. This is grady. This is something that just begs for that old cliche. Well, it sounds like it was recorded in a casket, underwater, with steel walls. So what? It actually makes for Kind of an interesting history lesson. Not to mention, it still has a cult following to this day. They actually did a one-off reunion show just this past year in 2010. And people went crazy for it. To the point where they had to release a 7-inch that had a couple of uh, old songs on it. Not to mention a new one. Yeah. Just think about it. Just think about this, folks. You're hanging out at work. There's four other people there. Y'all want to play music. Y'all want to do something strange, something out there. 
You play some songs in the warehouse after hours. You rent some studio space. And now all of a sudden, 20 years later, you have a cult following. It could happen. Happened with Vaughn. Could happen with you.